So this is the session on effective paragraph writing or purpose writing purposeful paragraphs. Paragraphs that are nicely written and which draw your reader in a nice flow throughout your work. Sounds great, doesn't it? And within and like you said there, within the paragraphs, uh, the critical analysis or the critical evaluation of some of the ideas which have been put forward. So writing paragraphs can be a challenge. They, they can be a challenge for lots of people and it can be challenging for writing paragraphs and incorporating ways of writing which may be different from which may be different from ways of writing you studied in a different country or a, a different university. And then students often complain about the difficulty in making their writing flow. So it's very easy just to stick sentences together. And you have an idea in your head and you stick it down. You have another idea, you stick it down. So it's a little bit like, it's a little bit like speaking. So th the transition between the spoken word and the written words, and I think I covered that in week one, can sometimes take a little bit of readjustment. So whereby when you're speaking, you just quite often open your mouth and go blah. And let and let the words come out. It doesn't necessarily have to be the same order. However, when you're writing your paragraphs, there does have to be an order. And it's often those little connections that fall to pieces. Students often know what to say, and that's like the spoken word, but you can't get it down onto paper. And sometimes it's finding the tools to express those ideas. If you have a poor paragraph structure, it makes it impossible to follow an argument and there's additional problems with placing information in the wrong place. So what should be at the start is sometimes at the end and what's in what should be the end is, is often at the start. So throughout the session, it will help you build a better paragraph and strengthen the links between the paragraphs. So not only do you have to strengthen the links between the sentences, but you have to put the links between the paragraphs. It'll help you understand the importance of the topic sentence and help you create transition between ideas and demonstrate the importance of evidence and evaluation. So you mentioned there about critical work. So when you go up through the end of, of your undergraduate and then you're doing, a mas you're doing masters, describing something and discussing something isn't really enough. You're thinking in a slightly higher level. So the evidence you get from other sources and from other authors, you, you will be evaluating that evidence critically, meaning you're not just taking it at, at face value. And those other authors will be contributing towards the overall idea that you're that you're making or that you're, you're putting forward. So here's the paragraph structure. So whether a report or an assignment. So if you look on the right hand side, you've got there. So that's when it says essay, it can be a research report or, or an assignment. So it will always have an introduction. The introduction starts with the general statement. So if you're writing a report, it could be the it could be the, the background to the report. It could be the background to the research area. It could be setting the scene. It could be providing definitions. But if it's a if it's a an argument assignment. It could be giving you a thesis statement. And then throughout, you've got your body. So body's the main part, and the body will be split up into different paragraphs. And then you'll have the conclusion. And if you look on the left there, a paragraph will contain the topic sentence. So put in the chat or open your mic and say what what do you think the purpose of the topic sentence is? What is the function of the topic sentence? Anybody know? The topic sentence, what function do you think it has? Even it comes at the start of the start of the paragraph. Yes. OK, so the introduction to the paragraph, thank you, and developing the main idea, thanks. So the topic sentence is the most important sentence of the paragraph. 
And while I'm at it, I think I will, in a minute, I'll put a link to the Padlet up in the chat. And so then and as I'm discussing things, you'll be able to look at the Padlet. So the topic sentence is the, is the most important sentence of the paragraph. It, it gives you the point of what you're trying to say. It is the main idea. It is the most powerful sentence and everything else links to it. Underneath the topic sentence. Now, this is this is at its at its basis. It has the supporting sentences. So the support is can be evaluation. Uh, sorry, support can be explanations and it can be evidence. And then you have a concluding sentence. So if you give me two seconds now, I may I'm going to go and find the link to the Padlet. So this may I may go off screen. If I do, I'll be. Look, look, I'm back now, so. Now I put a link to a Padlet in here, the Padlet being the interactive notice board. So if you want to click on that, go to the Padlet and go to academic article. Now we're looking at paragraph structure. So click on the third column along which is called academic article. Surprisingly enough, it's an article on climate justice. So I will just go through here and I will find Okay. I'll find a good example. OK, look at paragraph three. OK, so paragraph three is on the second, third page, I think. Paragraph three is called Equity Dimension of Climate Justice. So look at the first sentence. So in lieu of changing climate, comma, the classification of climate justice is based on the basic principle of equal treatment and fairness in society. So that is the point of the paragraph. That is the main that, that is the main purpose of the paragraph. So from that point, you know that the rest of the the rest of the paragraph will be talking about um, fairness, the, the classification of climate justice based on basic principles. So the rest of it will be adding adding on to that. So if you look under um, past that sentence, you will see the equal treatment is a basic human right, comma, the basic building blocks of fairness in today's society required for society to function well. So the second the second sentence is supporting the first one. Now I can't remember who it was, it might have been Nelson that asked about connecting words. So you'll see the first sentence there and then the next sentence there. Which words do you think in the second sentence are the same? as two of the words in the first sentence and which which make it flow on which make it flow a bit better there's a there's a repetition of words can you can you see which which two words they are assuming you're on the padlet now and you're on that article can you look at two of the words which are the same as two of the words in the first sentence the topic sentence Yes, good. Equal treatment. So that's another. I mean, that's one of. I think that's one of the best ways of. That is one of the best ways I think, of making sure that your sentences flow. It's it's constant repetition. So making sure that you use a synonym, or that you repeat a couple of the words in the following sentences shows that there's continuity in expression and continuity in thought. So if you go to the sentence under, under after that, the third sentence, we're in paragraph three. It says, it is well recognized that 
now that in the course of the development of the groups, the most benefits are from the high levels of emissions? Yes, basic fairness, good. So, so it's nice to see how, you know, rather than rather than dropping sentences from anywhere, that there's a continuity of thought. And it's a continuity of thought and the continuity of expression of ideas that will make your will make your paragraph flow an awful lot better. And then you've got the concluding sentence. Okay, so you've got your topic sentence, your support, and the concluding sentence. So let's look back at that one, that paragraph. So paragraph three. I think the paragraph is quite long. Okay, so right at the very end of that paragraph, so you, you're going on to the following page, and right at the end of it, it says the developed countries based on fossil fuel economy should obligated to the people in the low income countries, that should be, should be, so that they have access to the opportunities to adapt to the impacts of climate impact change and be ready and embrace the low carbon climate resilient development in their economy. Okay, so that's the concluding sentence. So that concluding sentence is written in the voice of the writer, not the author. So you will see before the, you've got the you've got the the reference, you've got a citation of the authors. That concluding sentence is a conclusion. It should relate back to the topic sentence. So that's the writer's voice there. So there's no there's no reference. So it says there, so the following, the next slide, so this is slide five, it says complex sentence, a uh, complex paragraph is not necessarily complex, it is just contains a structure for a paragraph, so therefore you have the topic sentence. So whatever type of writing you're doing, you've got your topic sentence. The next sentence expands the point. So we've just seen that previous example in the climate justice article, how the next sentence just builds onto it, and it builds onto it logically by repeating a couple of the words in it. It gives the evidence and the evaluation plus own argument. So when it comes to critical, critically analyzing, this is where the critical analysis will come in. So it'll come in in the evaluation of something. So depending on what you're talking about, you had your topic sentence, you're discussing something, you're expanding on it, you're producing evidence. The evidence could be this is shown by, and then you, you put your author's name in it. Then you, you're evaluating it. So the evaluation of it could be something like this piece suggests that such and such and such. And you can say this is this is um this demonstrates conversely, or on the other hand, by another author who disagrees by stating such and such. So whatever evidence you're putting, you're possibly bringing forward another author and using the other author as an evaluation of it, or you're making your own evaluation. You say, this shows that, this demonstrates that. So we look back at that article. But you can also do it. You can look through that article and see if you can find any bits of it, which are... evaluative comments but we've got a slide further on which shows you okay so i'm on page 71 okay so i'm on the second paragraph of page 71 it begins indigenous people and I'm on the second sentence, sorry, the third sentence. The third sentence begins with the authors. The third sentence begins, Yeterstad and Russell, 2012, explain that groups that do not have appropriate indigenous lands have experienced violations of basic rights, displacement due to renewable energy generation projects. And then the further, the, 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 the sentence following that, you will see that that's puts forward a little piece of evaluation. Although UN climate 
summit in Copenhagen 2009 already called for climate justice in its reach to mainstream media. Now this is the time to manifesting manifesting this in news media, making linkings particularly to indigenous people. So that's making some kind of evaluative comment. So that's the writer's evaluation of what's been written. So you're always putting forward other people's other con contributions from other from other authors into your writing and then evaluating how how that author contributes to what you're saying. So expand point evidence evaluation, supporting claim, supporting claim transition. So a transition can be to another sentence or it can be to the next paragraph. And there's, there's bits of this transition um, resources. So this is the basic structure of it. So this is essentially what you're doing. You're making your point, you're producing evidence. So it could be like support one, support two. The point is the topic sentence. So it's peel, the evidence. You're explaining it and you're evaluating it, explaining it, then evaluating it. So explaining it something could be it worked. Evaluating it is why it worked or why it didn't work and disputing authors linking to the next point in the following paragraph or go back to the main question so the next paragraph will often repeat something from the first paragraph or repeating the same words or repeating the same idea so if you repeat you start off by repeating the second the same idea in the previous paragraph and then then moving on any questions so far i'm rabbiting away here any questions? No. Nope. Okay, so macro structure. So macro structures is top down. So the macro structure is the overall picture. So first of all, you have the logical arguments. You've got your logical. You've got your logical piece in the first in in the paragraph. So throughout the paragraph, you've got a flow. So throughout the flow is the is the purpose of the essay and and you know the, the the information that you're putting in it why does it matter you've got the information because it's asking the question you're putting forward so the point shows that the research area is interesting and relevant so it's the relevance of what you're putting forward which makes the which contributes towards the the flow and the point of your of your assignment so coherence is the trait that makes a paragraph easily understandable to a reader. So coherence, coherence is the understanding. So it's the flow of ideas that makes the paragraph understandable. So you can help create coherence in your paragraphs by creating logical bridges and verbal bridges. So the verbal bridges are things like repeating words. So sometimes you can repeat words, as we saw in the previous paragraph. So Let's look back at that article. And then let's look at paragraph five, which is called Research Gaps and Future Scopes. Then again, there you see that the third sentence begins any dimension of the justice. And they're using a synonym there. You see future directions and dimension. So in addition to you to repeating words, you can use synonyms. Yeah. So looking at other articles are always are always a, a really good way of um, helping helping you understand the structure of a paragraph. So, so it's linear writing, so, so you're writing in a straight line. So essentially, you're telling your audience what you're going to tell them. This report aims to, or this report will, or the background of such and such is this. And then you tell them what you promised in the first, in the topic sentence or the introduction. And then you, in summary, you're telling your audience what you've told them. So you're summarizing it. So you're summarizing the main points. Okay, so there we have the paragraph organization. So the so the 
as we've covered up till now is the is the overall structure of the paragraph so if you look go back to the padlet again and if you go to to writing a effective paragraph so you can click on that one you can also click on the structuring or SEO one so if you look back at that you will find um you'll find examples of topic sentences so the topic sentence the first sentence the most powerful sentence outlines the argument and we've seen examples on the, on the on the padlet it outlines the argument or it makes the point you gain a clear idea of the position the writer is presenting so you've got a point of of the work that you're going to be producing you gain a clear idea of the evidence used to support it. So the evidence is coming from you the other authors and coming from the sources. And then you can link the topic sentences and the text body back to the introduction. So the following paragraphs will link back to the introduction and the topic sentence in it will also contain things that you've used in the introduction. And the most important information comes first. There's the tip there, so you include a key word from an introductory paragraph in your topic sentence. Okay. So after your topic sentence, you can expand the point, provide the evidence and the transition. So after the evidence can be evaluation. So depending, depending on what kind of paragraph you're writing and depending on the type of assignment you're doing. So the second point can expand in the topic sentence and the evidence can be statistics, reference to sources. So the evidence there, as we've seen in that climate justice article, it'll be the evidence is provided by referring to sources, or it could be a diagram. The following diagram explains or, or diagram 3.1 demonstrates the number of etc, etc. So, so it's quite often referring to something or referring to a study which has been carried out or to to summarize a study carried out by and then you refer to the you refer to the sources evaluation so this is this can be a critical evaluation it's making the point relevant to your assignment brief so always 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 go back to never miss exactly what your report is on or what your research question is or what your coursework question is always keep that right at the back of your mind and you'll be using the different sources and different authors idea and and and, and then weaving them in weaving them into your assignment weave, weaving them into your report and, and evaluating them evaluating them means that you're using some critical critical evaluation you're looking at it you're not taking it at point blank as it were and then the last bit there is you transition, you move to the next point or evaluate. This demonstrates that. This shows that. Uh, in contrast, it was demonstrated by another author that this didn't work. So you're basically you're basically using other people's ideas. And it, it, it can often be when you're when you're using critical analysis, it can often seem like you're kind of you're dancing around juggling and balancing different arguments by putting forward what can be seen as a, a complex a complex um scheme of ideas and these are some of the these are some of the transition words and then you can see conclusion there's for your last one as a result therefore consequently on the whole consequently is a good way a, a good way of showing that as a result of something or therefore so when you've written your paragraph, well, you, you might want to go back at some of the paragraphs that you've already written and ask yourself some of these questions. Is your topic sentence strong enough? Or do you need to go back and rewrite it and think what your whole paragraph is about? What, what's it, what subject or topic is it introducing? And don't, don't be afraid of making it too short or making it short because quite often if the sentence is too long you you'll end up waffling and then the reader will forget what's what's going on does my paragraph add to or elaborate in a point made previously i.e a previous paragraph and if and if so have i made this explicit with an appropriate linking word or phrase as 
as discussed in section 1.3 which dis which which talked about whatever it was so you're referring backwards it's very important when you're doing a dissertation to be able to link back to previous things because and then it also it keeps you right when you're when you're when you're working through it does my paragraph introduce a completely new point or a different viewpoint to before and if so have explicit shown this with a suitable connective so this is where you've got your signposting words if you go back to the padlet and you look in the column to the far right and then you look at the signposting so just have a have a, a quick look through that then you do there on page four of the document consequently as a result alternatively however additionally no however try not to use however too much because it could just seem like a, an overused word okay and then page six of the document right down at the bottom some usual tips for signposting in conclusions So connecting words, linking words. Then after you've done your topic sentence, after you've written the, the body it, the body of it, use your evidence. Yeah, nevertheless, maybe try not to use maybe. I'll tell you why, because maybe is too general. It's too it's it's too it's too uncertain. I'm trying to think what else you could say. Um, if 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 there's if it's only a possibility, you could say it can often be. Maybe it's a little bit too, a little bit unacademic, not really academic enough. But yes, it can often be, because I think sometimes sometimes view words, yeah. Okay, you tried to make it relevant to the first one. Okay, that's fine. But yes, yeah, so, so words, so, so so words that if you use if you're using words that are too general, which I'm sure you're not, but if you do words that are too general, it also it often means in your work that there's no um, you there's not enough credence to what you're saying. So it's always good to be as specific as possible. Oh, I see. Nevertheless, maybe yeah. So concluding sentence is the last sentence of the paragraph. You should firmly close your paragraph or argument. So if you look back at that, at the climate justice article, you'll see examples there. These sentences support your thesis and mirror your topic sentence, but often go one step further by including a major point from the body of your paragraph. Now, here's a pets example. Because dogs consume more food than pets, cats have a similar carbon footprint than dogs, which makes them the sensible pet. So that looks like a bit of an IELTS style conclusion, but nevertheless. Moving on. So some some people, some students find that their paragraphs are just really too short and they don't really have enough to say in them. So I think one of the things to do is to be able to, you know, make sure you're following a structure by having your topic sentence, by having your supporting sentences, maybe one, two, which could include your evidence, and then you can evaluate it and then conclude it. So if, if you cover all these things, the chances are you'll be able to get information that adds power to, to your work. You can use examples and illustrations. You can cite data. You could be using report data, you could say a report carried out by such and such, and then you put in the reference demonstrates that or illustrates that or shows that. So that could be supporting, that could be the evidence supporting what you're saying. You could examine testimony. You could be looking back at another author or another source and what that says. You could be defining terms in the paragraph, the term refers to, or that this term uh, describes, you could can be comparing contrasting you could be evaluating the causes and the reasons for something you could be examining effects 
and consequences. Or you might, again, be looking at a timeline, time segments within, within an, in an event. So the chances are, if you, you, if you know exactly what you're trying to say in that essay, sorry, in that paragraph, you'll have enough to say. You might even find that you've got too much. So when, you, when you've written your paragraph and it's actually possibly a little bit longer than you want, you need, to, you, you need to go back and look at it and take out things that are necessary. Things that you might be giving a little bit too much extra information or might be considered to be waffle. So take, take any kind of waffle out of it. And then you transition between paragraphs. So not only do you transition between sentences by using the signposting, but furthermore, conversely, um, moving on or as stated, or however, furthermore, moreover. A topic sentence can help transition to a new paragraph by making mention of the previous paragraph's main idea. The, let me think, I'll just look back at, I'll just look back at the article and see how they've done it. Yes, OK, so identification of, vulner of vulnerable groups. So they might have been talking about vulnerable groups in the previous paragraph. So being able to identify words and phrases, single words or phrases in the next paragraph can, can make it um, can make it flow. So a common way to structure is linking word phrase, previous paragraphs, main idea. So you're just basically repeating the idea of the previous paragraph or the previous report section. And there's the other pets example. So what does it say here? Having a smaller carbon footprint than dogs, which is the previous paragraph's main idea, plus cats are also more cost effective for owners because okay, so you're bringing on a new topic. So don't, don't be afraid to, to be repetitive in a way that is causing, is introducing a flow, not necessarily repeating information. It's just helping with the, with the flow of the, of the paragraph. So here's an example. I like this example. So have a read through it. Wind turbines in Sweden. So I'll let you very quickly read through it and then I will go on to the next slide which will show you how it's what the different paragraph sections are next section okay the first you can see the first sentence there is the topic When wind farms are built in the vicinity of settlements, the wind companies may meet opposition. So that's an expansion. The next one is expansion on point two. Furthermore, there's your linking word. More than two thirds of the Swedish land area is covered by forests. So you're producing, you're introducing evidence. And then afterwards, you'll see these densely forested regions. So, so you're repeating forests. Then you will see there that that's the evaluation. And then you see at the last bit in northern Sweden, and other northern regions, re regions, constructing and operating wind farms is further complicated by the challenges of cold climates, for instance, low temperatures and icing. So you will see that in the next bit, in the next paragraph, they'll be talking about the cold temperatures and icing and, and everything that's that's related to in that in that press paragraph. So anybody get any questions on that? Does that make sense with the structure of the paragraph? I hope it does because it, it's a fairly it's fairly relevant to to to, to academic articles and it will, and looking at it that way will help you write your own articles it will help you write your own paragraphs hmm, so the paragraph problems too long and waffling and they're they're basically long and waffling waffly because they don't really adhere to any kind of structure and structure helps you with your work and will help the reader understand the work too short 
not enough detail, maybe more abstract. So be specific. So wherever possible, spell it out, introduce the ideas, give examples, be specific with your examples. Issues with coherence and unity, so you need better linking. So I think somebody said before, it's like the linking word. So look back in that Padlet and then a linking word will will it will help the function of the sentence, the, the function of the paragraph, and it has a purpose. And then check that the paragraph relates to the whole point of the the whole point of the report, the whole question. And an additional challenge is the patchwork of paraphrases that, that kind of that kind of appear. So and this is what the signposting does. It leads your reader and it indicates the argument whether it's and then it can look forwards or backwards. You can signpost using single words or short phrases. Single words, however, initially, short phrases in conclusion. You can do retrospective signposting. So retrospective signposting would mean uh, in the section 4.5, which discussed, or the previous, the previous, uh, the previous entry by, and then you can put the author and demonstrates that this is further backed up by. So you're always looking back at something. So if in re in retrospect, you're looking back at something which was which was mentioned, which was mentioned before. So you're signposting, you're moving the author, sorry, the reader back to the back to the previous point and then moving it back again. So you're just balancing it out, moving it back again to your current point. OK, words and phrases. So have a quick look at that. So these are the, these are really good. So, so when, when you're doing critical analysis of something, so critical analysis doesn't doesn't mean criticizing. It means looking at something from a different viewpoint and looking at the different ways in which authors can be purposefully contributing towards your work. So you might have two you might have two authors who who are putting forward the same viewpoint, in which case you'd be using comparing ideas in the same way or likewise, and then the author demonstrated that. You can be contrasting the ideas. On the contrary, likewise, uh, on the other hand, we're showing the cause and effect. OK. And then this is just, this is the connected or, or um, connecting words which just show a listing. And they're, they're fairly simple ones. So I think that's. And there we have it there. So the, the resources you've got there, that's if you're wanting to book a session, you've got any queries and general queries, you've got any queries about this course or any queries about anything to do with um, academic language, academic English and writing, use that one. And I will close the.